I do want to like dig deeper into like your mindsets and because I feel like you have such a great foundation that set you up for success. You talk about, I mean, you already have these successful business stories and you make it sound easy when you talk about it in a quick little, you know, in a podcast, but I'm sure there were a lot of challenges, a lot of things that you had to break through, whether it was a challenge mentally or, or anything. Can you talk about, I don't know how you got through those moments? What were the things that you had to grow through? I think when it comes to, if we're speaking specifically to about business, but I think this applies to any area of life. Yeah, any area. I think one of the greatest books to read on this topic is Big Leap um, by Gay Hendricks. I didn't read the book first. I made the big leap. And then when I read the book, I was like, ah, it makes sense. The concept is so true. And I've read the book so many times because oftentimes what we do is we self-sabotage right before we make the big leap. Mm -hmm. Whether it is, in my case, coming from an upbringing where there was no financial abundance. Like we were always very aware of money and it was always tight. And although there was always food on the table, like we were not poor or anything, but you know, money was always tight. Like you couldn't just go and buy anything you wanted. We didn't travel. I mean, my first trip ever was flying to Canada because my family immigrated there. So I always tell my daughter how lucky she is because I didn't get on that in an airplane until I was 16. And that was to immigrate to a different country. It wasn't a holiday, right? So I come from a very different mindset. And in order to be where I am today, like mentally, I had to make that big leap. And how did I make that big leap? Partly is still mystery to me because I remember since I was a child, I was a dreamer. I've always known that A, I'm not going to stay in Azerbaijan. That's where I'm from originally. I spent the first 16 years of my life there. I just always had this vision of myself traveling the world, living abroad. Um, I didn't know about business, but I just knew that I would be on camera. Somehow I just, wow. I thought I'm going to be an actress, yeah. but that didn't happen. But then I realized, but I am on camera. So in a way it came true. Like I'm still... Mm -hmm out there sharing something, not in movies or film, but it, it is in a way film, right? Like it's in video format. So somehow there was that inner knowing that knew, and I followed that intuition. Now here I think is the key. If we all connect to that inner knowing, which I call intuition, like it's actually in your gut, um, I feel like we all know why we're here. And I feel like we all know what our calling is. But I think as children, because sometimes our upbringing doesn't encourage for us to connect with our inner child or that inner knowing, we get conditioned that, you know, follow everybody else, go to school or like follow this certain path that everybody's following. I think there's less of that conversation now, but I think like when I was younger, it was like, finish high school, go to university, get married, have kids that, you know, buy a car, buy a house. And I just remember thinking that doesn't resonate with me. Like, I am not going to follow that path. Like, it doesn't feel right. I want to do things unconventionally. And that resonates with me. And I'm so grateful I followed my intuition. I think it's because I followed my intuition that I am here today. And my intuition did tell me that you need to believe in yourself. And I think if we don't believe in ourselves, we'll never achieve any dreams. I think most people... It's not that they're not bright or it's not that they don't have it to make it in business, relationships, whatever area. It's just they don't believe. And again, it's that conscious mental leap that you have to do to say that I'm going to get there. I know I'm going to get there. And again, what do you use? You, you use affirmations. You mm -hmm. create a vision board. Like I literally, a year before we created Luxy Hair, I, I was... Um, maybe it was a year and a half, two years before we created Luxy Hair, I was doing an image consulting course. And part of that course was to create a vision board. Mm -hmm. And we had to like cut out pictures from magazines. And I remember putting all these pictures of things, experiences, items. And like I told you, when we created Luxy Hair, within the first year, I could have like 90% of those things. And of course, the vision board alone didn't do the work, but it allowed me to have the vision that then allowed my brain to 
laser focus on what I need to do to get to that vision. And most people are too scared to even create the vision. They don't even know what they want. So again, how are you going to get there if you don't know what you want? And many people listening now might say, well, I still don't know what I want. So how do I get there? Well, make a list of things you want to try. Make a list of things that you, maybe you have tried that you know spark something inside of you that make you feel alive. Be completely, radically honest with yourself. Not things that they show on social media or things that your parents want you to do or grandparents or your friends or your boyfriend or your husband, but things that make you feel alive. Literally sit down and write a list, 10. And then one at a time, start doing them, trying them out. What's the worst that can happen? Like I recently uh, reconnected with a friend who was a very talented videographer and now he's an astrologer, right? So it's like people change their career path because at one point they become aware that even though I'm great at this thing, it doesn't really make me happy. And, you know, you can now make a great living being an astrologer and you can be totally in alignment with what you're doing because you believe that this can benefit people. And I just love these stories where people make this conscious intelligent change in their life yeah. and leave more in alignment with what makes them happy. And I think then the world can be a happier place for all. I think we're all ready for that. It's like enough of that old paradigm and story of suffering, self-sacrifice. I don't believe in that. I don't subscribe to that. And I think when you start living from that place, you start manifesting truly the, the life of your dreams. 